This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Hindu. Hello and welcome to News Tonight on NDTV Hindu. I'm Ramanathan. I'm Shabir Ahmad and I'll bring you all the latest on the CSK raid. Well, we will be joined by my colleague uh, Shabir Ahmed soon with the top stories we are following tonight. The IT department goes on a countrywide raid at, uh, at offices of IPL team owners. CSK owner India Simmons faces the heat here in Chennai. Is Nalini's premature release turning into a faraway dream? Velo police searches her prison cell once again this morning. An eight-year-old girl dies after a wall collapses in a school building under construction by the Tamil Nadu Slum Clearance Board. Okay. City police move Hume to Chengalpet camp. Hume's mother arrives in city to bail him out. Just confinement. That's how we define it. Well, Rajni fans, mark your calendar. Superstar reveals the release date of his next flick, Endiran. At the Yandiran, no, I'm actually Yandiran. Actually, it is 90 percent over, and uh, is uh, 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 planning to release on August 15th of this year. Simultaneous raids at eight cities across the country, planned and perhaps a pressure tactic by the government on IPL team owners. Here in our city, the Chennai Super Kings also came under the scanner of the IT department. The department has raided the owners of Chennai Super Kings, the India Cements. India Cements is owned by N. Srinivasan, a heavyweight at the BCCI and also at the IPL Governing Council. The CSK office at Santhom is being raided right now. India Cements paid $91 million to acquire the rights to the franchise for 10 years in 2008. My colleague Shabir joins us from the Chennai Super Kings office right now. Shabir, what details do you have right now? Well, uh, it has been several hours and uh, uh, the raid is happening uh, uh, till now and uh, right you can see behind me the situation is pretty much the same uh, since uh, uh, evening and uh, there has been not even a single information passed out to the journalists who are waiting here for a very long time uh, uh, nor from the IT department officials or uh, uh, from, the, uh, from the India Simmons uh, uh, office here. And do we, we know that uh, more than uh, uh, four to five teams are inside uh, and the raids are being carried out at uh, the finance department. Basically, uh, the raid is uh, focused on uh, verifying the documents. That is what uh, sources have been telling us because uh, uh, this is the, the raids and the searches are at a very preliminary stage. That is what we have been hearing from our sources because first of all, they wanted to know what kind of irregularities has happened uh, uh, in this, whether there is uh, any kind of irregularity in this entire uh, episode. And that is what perhaps uh, the IT department officials are focusing uh, right now. And uh, we have not uh, uh, got any official uh, confirmation as in what is happening inside uh, uh, from the office sources here, uh, uh, from the CSK office sources. But uh, we are waiting for, uh, there may be some kind of uh, uh, details emerge uh, uh, later uh, in a short while from now. That is what we have been uh, uh, waiting since evening to know what is happening inside uh, uh, Ramanathan. Thanks, Shabi, for joining us from uh, the spot where the raids are happening. Well, not only the CSK, but the offices of the Kolkata Knight Riders was also raided. The raid was conducted inside the premises of the Cricket Association of Bengal. A notice has also been issued to King Zealand Punjab for submission of all documents and papers to the IT authorities. There have been other raids too. Income tax officials raided four places in Mumbai. The raids were conducted at the offices of Multiscreen Media and World Sports Group. Now, after an exit formula being worked out for, the, for him by the BCCI, Lalit Modi has hit back at the BCCI and has blamed the council for all the decisions taken. In a letter dated April 14th, Lalit Modi has reportedly asked for permission to reveal the breakup of all the stakeholders involved in the IPL franchise. He says he was denied the permission. Now, five people have been arrested for the alleged involvement in the blast which took place at the Chinnaswamy Stadium in Bangalore on Thursday. The accused have been arrested in Hubli and all of them have been identified as hailing from Uttar Pradesh.
In other news, the startling claim by Velo prison officials that a mobile phone was seized from Nalini Sri Haran's cell has created a flutter in Tamil Nadu. Sources say calls were made to Canada and the UK from, from the seized phone. The issue rocked the Tamil Nadu Assembly as the Congress demanded a thorough probe. Shabir Ahmed reports. A fresh search at the Velo prison. A day after officials claimed to have seized a mobile phone from the cell of Rajiv Gandhi assassin Nalani Sriharan. And an echo inside the Tamil Nadu Assembly. Furious Congress MLAs allege that calls were made to Canada and the United Kingdom, where it is believed LTTE sympathizers are still active. The DMK ally has cautioned the state government about a new threat from militants probably in touch with a life convict and has now demanded that Nalani be kept in solitary confinement. This is a big conspiracy is there. Therefore, because still the government should concentrate on this subject and they are allowed to even cancel the A class what she is enjoying and she should be put in separate jail. However, the pro-Tamil outfits are not ready to buy this argument. They accuse the police of conspiring against Nalini's premature release. Uh, cannot uh, get a uh, mobile phone. Uh, there is no possibility of getting uh, SIM cards. So I suspect a foul play to uh, stop her early release. With Shabir Ahmed in Chennai, Sanjay Pinto for NDTV Hindu. The Tamil Nadu government today announced that it will nominate its representatives to a five-member committee appointed by the Supreme Court to look into the various aspects of the Mullai Periyar Dam dispute. Making the Suomoto statement in the Tamil Nadu Assembly, Chief Minister Karunanadi said that after discussion with the Advocate General and considering the importance of Supreme Court verdict on the issue, the Tamil Nadu government has decided to nominate its representatives. The Chief Minister also informed that the central government had requested the state government twice to nominate its representatives in the five-member panel. Former Supreme Court Judge Lakshmanan will be representing in the panel on behalf of the Tamil Nadu government. Uh, meanwhile, the Kerala government has already appointed retired Apex Court Judge Katie Thomas in this panel. Now, after a court in Chennai granted bail to Dutch national Will Hume, the police have restricted his movements by sending him to a detention centre for foreigners in Chengalpet. Our crime reporter Salim explains the reasons behind this move. Dutch national Will Hume, charged with sexual crimes against children, was let out of Pulal prison. His mother flew into Chennai from the Netherlands to bail him out. But her effort only saw her son being sent from prison to a detention centre in Chengalput. He is not missing. He has been uh, confined under 3.2e of the Indian Foreigners Act. Uh, this section is applied whenever we want to restrict the movements of undesirable elements, that is especially foreigners. And since he also has a criminal case, we have confined him under that section. He's been lodged in the Chengalpet uh, special camp. In March, Hume's bail application was dismissed by a fast track court. His lawyers then moved the side up at court on Tuesday. They argued that Hume has been in jail for more than 165 days and also furnished surety wanted by the court for his release. But now Hume's lawyers say they can no longer trust the police. In Chennai with Salim, Jason Tosh for NDTV Hindu. In a shocking incident in Enor, a wall in a primary school being constructed by the Tamil Nadu Slum Clearance Board has collapsed, killing an eight-year-old girl. This primary school was under construction. And the girl was on the road near the building when the wall collapsed, killing her. Eight-year-old Ashwini preferred to take this route and that's when the school wall collapsed. Ashwini was immediately rushed to the government uh, hospital nearby but succumbed to the injuries. Most of the people living here are fishermen. They were actually living along the national highways uh, in, uh, in Thiruvatriyur and were relocated to this place called Tsunami Nagar by the Tamil Nadu Slum Clearance Board. Now this project is being carried out at a cost of 90 crore rupees. This project is being funded by the World Bank. Now the problem here is this may look like a strong construction, but this is actually not. The police have registered a case under Section 304A of the Indian Penal Code and are on the lookout for the contractors who are absconding. Now this is a shame for the Tamil Nadu Slum Clearance Board and the contractors that they have roped in. 
Up next after this short break, has Chennai stopped caring for its elders? Find out more on the other side.